Hey folks, welcome back to Straight Talk Whiskey for episode number 13. I'm Nick, and thanks for joining us because today we are going to start our first review on our mini-series of Jack Daniels, as you can see out in front of me. Now, I know I was saying that we'd get back into the routine of our regular order and reviewing whiskeys, but I thought now would be a good time to introduce this mini-series because I have the bottles here. Um, if you're looking for the black label, old number seven, and you're trying to look through here, you're not seeing things, it's just not here, because that was our first Straight Talk Whiskey review, so go back and watch that if you want. Um, so I'll just kind of run through the lineup here of what we have. Um, you'll notice on the outsides I have Jack Daniels Tennessee Fire and Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, which I'll just do mini reviews, probably one this, like the middle of this week and then the middle of the following week. Just because they're liqueurs and I don't normally drink them, but since I have them on hand for guests and that sort of thing that come over and they like that kind of thing. So I'll be doing that. And if you notice, I think um, on the camera it's a little, little fuzzy over here. That's because I keep these in the freezer, so it's probably giving off some of the, uh, the, the uh, steam there from the, the frost that's on here. So what we have is the Jack Daniels unaged rye, their, their new um, exploration into changing their recipe for the first time in a hundred years or more um, into what was primarily um, corn based um, whiskey. It's now they're looking at um, rye becoming the, the dominant grain. So we have the, the, um, the unaged and the rested rye. Um, so we'll get into that more. Then we have what we're going to be reviewing today, Jack Daniels Green Label, Gentleman Jack, and finishing off with Jack Daniels Single Barrel. So that's our whole lineup. Let me move these to the side without knocking everything off the table because that would cut our review series pretty short. And it would be a very sad day in Straight Talk Whiskey Land. Um, so let's, let's get into it the Jack Daniels Green Label. It is a younger whiskey using the same um, recipe as the Jack Daniels Old Number 7 Black Label. Now, where this came about was years ago, um, Jack Daniels was actually bottled at a higher ABV than it is now. And what at least Jack Daniels says is that um, the market sort of transferred to people wanting something lighter, less kind of a kick to it, they want something smoother, easier, you know, to mix with, that sort of thing. So what they did is took this and brought it down to the 40% ABV, which we see here, and we know most of the whiskeys that you get, standard bottles are these days, um, especially here in America. And, but what happened is that trend continued with people wanting these uh, lighter uh, whiskeys. So, Ultimately, it all went down to 40%. Um, the black label went down to 40%, as we know. So what we have here, ultimately, is a younger version of the Jack Daniels original recipe. Now, in America, they have to stay on the bottle. Um, if it's under four, four years old, that has to be on the bottle. Don't see that anywhere. I've looked before. Um, I do not see it. So, it is at least four years old. Know that much. And what sets it apart is that it is matured in um, the bottom floor of the warehouse towards the center. Now this gives it the least amount of temperature change, which in turn leads to less interaction um, with the wood. Now higher up. Now this is going to be a big thing when we get into Gentleman Jack and Single Barrel, um, just the different places that um, those whiskeys are matured in the warehouse. plays a big role, especially um, in Tennessee, you know, that whole um, area of the country sees a lot of temperature change and definitely a lot of high temperatures in the summer months. So you get a lot of interaction with the whiskey and um, the wood of the barrels. So. Let's get into it and figure out what it tastes like. 
Now, I know a lot of people kind of go um, crazy for this because it's like um, they see it as a whiskey that just appears some days and then it's gone the next day and you never know if it's coming back or not. So um, there's a lot of people online that have shared pictures of just massive collections of Green Label in different sizes. This is the um, 750 milliliters, but there's they've got all different sizes out there. And, you know, I mean, we all know you might be one of them. I clearly enjoy Jack Daniels. You know, there's a lot of people who are, you know, devout fans of Jack Daniels. So, you know, it's definitely important. And because it is different, it's not just a collector's edition, you know, that uses the same exact... Um, recipe it is different so that's why I decided to review that include it in our reviews because there's others that you know I could review um, collectors editions other things the only thing that's slightly different that um, I would if I had had it um, is the Sinatra um, select version but that's like hundred and fifty dollars and you know this is kind of our, our core lineup here so we'll just stick with that so let's go in for the nose. Now, right off the bat, you can tell it's Jack Daniels, but it feels like a Jack Daniels Black Label that's been sitting out for a little while. Um, not like sitting out for days, but like either you kind of just left it aside and went and did something, um, did the dishes or something like that, came back to it, or you know forgot that it was sitting over there on your. Um, your stand, or like there's been some water added to it. Either way you put it, um, it does taste a little bit more mellow than the regular Jack Daniels. I'm still getting the predominance of wood influence there. There's a slight wood smoke, but not too much. It's pretty muted. Um, it's kind of like the night after you've had had a campfire, and in the morning you kind of have the last little remnants of the fire from the last night. That's sort of what I'm getting here. Slight vanilla, slight cinnamon, a um, little bit of uh, nutmeg spice in there, but again all these kind of things just poke around a little bit, little hints here and there. Nothing nothing too crazy, um, and I apologize I didn't go into the color, but it is slightly um, lighter than the Jack Daniels um, black label just slightly. It's um, you know, it's still kind of uh, amberish, but I would say a minus one or two on that scale. So let's go in for a taste. It's definitely smooth. Um, it doesn't last too long. You really got to pick at it before it leaves because it does go pretty fast. But there are some nice little spices in there. Um, like we said, a little nutmeg, some cinnamon, not a lot of wood um, um, flavors that I'm picking up. Um, definitely more in the nose, I would say, than there is in the taste, which is interesting. I'll take another pass at it. Now still, which is a trademark of Jack Daniels, you have this sweetness, like sweet corn on the tongue, um, and sort of a little bit of a kick in the back, which definitely seems like it's a, a little bit of that, that rye um, that's in there, but, but not overly so. But it kind of plays back and forth between the front, front of the palate with these sweeter notes, um, a little bit of dried fruit, but not a lot in there. And then, of course, um, move back, as we said, with a little bit of um, spices going on. Now with this, especially for more experienced whiskey drinkers, you're not going to get a lot of the kick that you normally get with other whiskeys, especially bourbons and Tennessee whiskeys, which this is. It's not a bourbon. So, um, and it definitely has a little bit of that, um, you know, the charcoal mellowing that they use. It's a, it's a smooth smoothness to it, but it's more diluted than um, standard. Um, 
and I know I keep making references back to that, but that's the only real, um, that's the best way to put it. Um, yeah, so there's not much in terms of, of the label on here. It kind of goes into um, just how it's made, that sort of thing. Um, the corn rye and malted barley, pretty standard. But um, again, just kind of those little hints. There's really not much to take from it. It's not bad, but it's just um, it's just a little bit um, on the smoother side. Uh, it's definitely younger, but it doesn't have this harsh bite or nip that you might get from from something that's been um, you know really not aged too long. So go in for one more pass, and then we'll we'll sum it up. Yep, same thing. You know, nothing more to be said than hasn't already been said here. Um, a lot of people will like this because it is it is a good whiskey to um, mix if you choose. Um, I personally don't, but I can see um, the benefits of mixing with this whiskey um, for people that do um, like to add Coca Cola or you know make a cocktail out of it. It's smooth. Um, Price-wise, it might be a couple dollars less, but it's not um, overly less expensive than um, regular Jack Daniels. Not to say that that's expensive um, as far as whiskey goes. It's on the lower end. But there's that. Um, we said the finish doesn't last too long. Um, you really got to take it apart before it leaves. So um, let's go in for a... Great talk whiskey score. It's going to be an 84. Um, and again, I hope that's not off frame. Um, you can still see it. If not, it's a 84 out of 100. So, during the week, let's say we're going to have Tennessee honey for you somewhere around Wednesday or Thursday. Um, and then we'll get into Gentleman Jack next weekend. So I hope everyone has um, a good rest of the weekend, um, a great week. As always, drink responsibly. And for Straight Talk Whiskey, I'm Nick. Have a good night.